No longer can unions only be content with battling around economic issues. What I now tend then? to keep up, I tend to keep up the same. What now? This I've been doing before in what protested. Four of us managed to get onto the ground and stop the game and I was dragged off and uh, my sister got hold of the, the, the ball and kicked it and the bulletin called it the best kick of the season. The fairly unique alliance occurred between what I term as the enlightened middle class and the enlightened working class came together and questioned whether all development was necessarily good and so the green bands were born. The sad thing was dealing with friends and relatives who, who could not in conscience support what I was doing. Um, that was hard to, to struggle with. We're opposed to this uh, people being scabs on the black band. Yeah, there's a black band on work on this side, is there? There's a black band all over this area. This is the rocks. Yeah. You read the papers. Yeah. The Green Band movement had such an impact politically not only in this country, but right throughout the world, and certainly altered people's perception of what unions could do and did do. My political activism started when I arrived at uh, university in 1966. Pretty naive, I think, uh, quite conservative, but the uh, Vietnam War uh, changed that, as it did for a whole generation. I was living in a country town when Prime Minister Bob Menzies committed um, uh, Australians to conscription and to fight in the Vietnam War. And I was appalled. Eventually I was called up. I refused to go. I refused to take a medical. And they hauled me into, into court, charged me with refusing to take a medical. And uh, I was fined $31 but I refused to pay the money, so they arrested me again and uh, took me to jail for 31 days. This is a birth of European Australia, and yet would have all been high rise right down to water's edge. You'll know that it's an area of um, old uh, warehouses, factories, but by and large it's a rather depressing area and not really suitable as an entry to the city of Sydney. I helped set, set up an organisation called the Anti-Apartheid Movement. We campaigned against the 1971 all-white Springbok tour, which is now a very famous occasion, of course. We actually stopped the game, and that was, you know, front-page news all around the world, actually. Um, and then I got uh, two months jail for that occasion. As we know, uh, people were, were murdered but uh, as the leaders of the builders' labourers, our lives were threatened many times. But because we had the support of the rank and file, the membership, that didn't come to be, fortunately. If you buggered up the football, it, would, it was then very obvious that the cricket wouldn't be able to come. And, uh, but we actually got Bradman to say, that it, to make the political statement, that, that, that he wouldn't play cricket with um, racist. South Africans rather than what we thought he would say, which is we can't guarantee their safety. I think civil disobedience is a, a, a right concept. But I've got to admit, I, I mean, people say to me, oh, you did a wonderful job, Simon, and it turned out that you were right and we, everyone else was wrong and, and you helped us stop the war. Well, that's bullshit. The protesters did not stop the war. What stopped the war was it went on for too long, it cost too much money and too many lives. And that's what stopped the war. It just wound down. When you consider that millions of people come to see the rocks, birthplace of European Australia, when you consider that Centennial Park, which was going to be destroyed, is now has over a million people going to see it. When there's only 60 buildings decreed by the National Trust to be worthy of preservation, and left are now standing because we refused to demolish them. So yeah, I think the legacy is very is very sound, and the legacy is alive and well. Well, my message for um, uh, young people today is uh, maintain the rage, keep up the demonstrations, but be uh, innovative and inventive about uh, ways of capturing the 
attention of the media. I'd like them to all be anti-war. I mean, but that's never going to come about. Um, countries seem to enjoy going to war. And we've seen in the history of this country, it has always been when unions reach out and go beyond economic issues and get involved in water political issues that they really show their own worth. And the, the Green Bands were a classic example of that. And there's no earthly reason why that sort of combination of a progressive intelligentsia, progressive youth and the progressive trade unions couldn't come together. There's no earthly reason at all. We really did believe that we could change the world. Keep the rock for the people!